everyone. I'm Melissa here and welcome to your Melissa moment. Hello everyone, Melissa here. Welcome to your Melissa moment and welcome to Wellness Wednesday. Today I want to talk about overall health. It was time for my physical. And if you don't know what that is, and you're over the age of 20, you should probably book one for yourself now. <laughs> um, you're supposed to go for a physical, I think it's every year, every two years, I'm not sure. So uh, I was like, you know what? Time to book in for a physical just to get overall checked out. I had a few kind of minor concerns written down that I wanted to talk to my doctor about. Um, it was also time for my pap smear. If you're a woman, you know what that is. Uh, they say you're supposed to get one done every three years. And I think my three years was coming up in like a couple months. So it's like, might as well do it. So um, I also had to get that done. So yay, that was great. Um, it's not as bad as some other things, but that's fine. Um, so I went in for my physical, um, overall I'm good. You know, I brought up my concerns. Um, so let's just go through them real quick. Uh, so the pap test, uh, he says everything looks good. Obviously we have to wait for the results of the actual smear to come back, but that's fine. Um, I asked him about mammograms because I'm over 40. Um, and I honestly don't know when you're supposed to get mammograms done. Um, I probably should do self exams. I don't, I don't really do self exams. Um, I know that probably sounds bad, uh, but I don't. Um, anyway, he did an exam there in my physical, everything he said felt fine. He didn't feel anything that was abnormal. Um, now, because I don't have a history in my family of breast cancer or anything like that, uh, he says that I don't have to go for a mammogram until I'm the age 50. I'm good with that. <laughs> uh, if you're not sure what, the, what a mammogram is, they bas basically take your breast and squeeze it between two metal plates, it's like an x-ray machine and they take pictures of the inside, but they squeeze it. Doesn't sound pleasant to me. Uh, I've never had one, so I don't know how bad it actually is. And I think also depending on what your breasts are like, make a difference on how the pain level is, but that's fine. Um, so luckily I don't have to go until I'm at least 50 because I don't have a history of breast cancer in my family. He says, if you have a history of breast cancer in your family, usually they suggest you start going around age 40-ish. Um, so yeah, that's something to consider if you're a woman. Um, and I mean, honestly, I think men too, because men also get breast cancer, so I'm not sure. Um, but that was good news. A couple other little concerns that I had. Um, I have, well, I was told anyway that I have Raynaud's disease. Um, basically, when I get cold, my fingertips and my feet go numb, tingly numb. Um, it's really painful. Like, you know when you're outside and you get like frostbite on your fingers and then you come in and they start to warm up and they're just like pins and needles and the pain is so bad? That's what I get <laughs> whenever I get cold. And I get cold a lot. Uh, basically, I have really bad circulation. My body, I've always had bad circulation. Um, I would say the last 10 years, this is kind of when I was diagnosed with it. Now I say diagnosed because I talked to my doctor about it and I don't remember him actually running any tests for it. He just said, you have right nose. So I don't know. Um, but that's what I've been told. 
it's really bad. Of course, I happen to live in Saskatchewan where our winters are like minus 50 for the majority of the winter, which is stupid. <laughs> um, I try to buy like, I have Sorel winter boots, which are supposed to be for like extreme cold. I have like thermal socks, you know, I'm trying everything to keep warm. Nothing works for me. Even these Sorels I have, they were like $250 boots. They don't keep my feet warm. It's like walking on ice blocks. You can't feel your feet. They feel heavy. They're hor it's horrible. Like try driving when you can't feel your feet. It's not fun. Um, so I also see a podiatrist, um, just for, you know, upkeep, I guess. I don't have any foot diseases or anything. It was just basically I have calluses and stuff. So I just go for like maintenance, if you will. Um, and I was talking to her about it cause she's like, oh, your feet are always so cold. And I'm like, yeah, I have rain nose. And she was just like, oh, and she suggested, well, you should maybe see a specialist. Like maybe something can be done cause it has gotten worse. I've noticed in the last like six months to a year, it's gotten worse. It used to just to affect my feet, but now my fingertips, like they go numb and tingly and it's not good. Um, so I brought it up with my doctor at the physical and he was like, yeah, we can, we can, uh, put a request in for a specialist. So, uh, he was supposed to put a request in. I mean, who knows with our healthcare system here in Canada, I'm betting it's going to be probably at least a year before I get in to see a specialist. Now the podiatrist had said a vascular specialist. My doctor, however, thought it would be more beneficial to see an autoimmune specialist because he's like, you know, maybe you have like an autoimmune issue. I'm like, well, I have a thyroid issue already. Like we know this, um, I'm on medication for that. So, um, he's sending me to an autoimmune specialist. So who knows when that's going to come in? Okay. So one thing off the list. Um, I also brought up my bariatric journey and how I am kind of struggling with it. Um, and I said, look, I also want to talk about plastic surgery because I'm getting to a point where I do have excess skin. I have quite a bit of it. Um, it's kind of interfering with my exercise. Like I told him I'm working out right now, six days a week. He was he like, wow, that that's more than most people. I'm like, oh, I'm trying, like I'm doing everything I can here. Um, so I said, you know, I have a lot of excess skin. It's starting to get in the way with some of my exercises and stuff. Um, you know, where are we at with that? Because in Saskatchewan, you used to have coverage in Saskatchewan. Um, if you lost a hundred pounds or more, they would cover a uh, abdominoplasty or a tummy tuck, but they've changed things now. And you have to prove that it's a medical issue. If you can prove it's a medical issue, it will be covered. If you can't, then it's out of pocket because it's considered a cosmetic or not needed surgery. I honestly think <laughs> the healthcare system needs to reassess this because it may not be medical in a sense where, you know, I have rashes or sores or things like that, but it's definitely affecting my mental health. Having excess skin really affects your mental health. You know, you get self-conscious, it looks horrible. It's, it's not, it's not a good thing. Um, and I think especially in today's world, mental health has really been brought to the attention of most people and how important mental health is. Um, so I really wish that they would reassess um, people with excess skin due to extreme weight loss. And I wish that they would give us a little bit more coverage in the form of surgeries to remove that excess skin. But today that's not happening. So, um, 
he is going to send me to, uh, I've got a referral for a plastic surgeon. Now I have a plastic surgeon. I actually had a tummy tuck done back in 2012, I think. Um, and the plastic surgeon I had was fantastic, did a great job, very happy with him. So I asked to be referred back to him. Um, and he has put a referral in, so I'm just waiting on a phone call from that. Now, what's interesting is my family doctor said that the consultation is free. You know, you'll at least be able to find out how much it's going to cost you out of pocket for your surgeries. Um, but on the website of my plastic surgeon, it says it is not free the consultation cost is around $155. Now that cost will get put toward the cost of your surgery. So it's not like you have to pay 155 for the consultation, then you have to pay over and above that. You get that money back off of your cost of your surgery, which I understand completely. Um, I assume they do that just so they don't have a lot of people booking consultations without following through with the surgery, right? They're trying to avoid wasting time on people who aren't actually serious. I get that 100%. I don't want to pay $155 for the consultation, not because I'm not planning on having the surgery. I am having the surgery. I guarantee you at some point in my life, I will be having the surgery. But I don't know when I'll be having the surgery because number one, I know I'm going to have to pay out of pocket. I know it's going to be really expensive. I don't currently have the money to do it. Number two, I want to make sure I do the surgery at the correct time, meaning I want to make sure I have lost all the weight or at least get to the goal weight that I want before I have the surgery to maximize the surgery, right? Um, so it's kind of a chicken egg thing, right? Because I can't really, I mean, if I don't know what it's going to cost me, it's going to be hard to st save up that much money. But if I don't go for the consultation, I won't know what it's going to cost. Like, you know, you see what I'm saying here? So I'm curious to see when they call me, if they tell me it's free or not. Uh, I will say, look, my family doctor told me this was a free consultation in which I'm sure they'll say, no, it's not. So we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Um, I say surgeries because I fully anticipate I'm probably going to have at least three cosmetic surgeries uh, would be my guess. Um, if you're curious on what I'm getting done, basically everything. I want everything done. Uh, everything from like my neck down to my ankles. Um, they have all different things, right? They have like what they call a mommy makeover and that kind of thing. So basically what I need to get done is number one, my arms, you can see, like you can see the line, like this is all excess skin here. Like this, this is all excess skin. So basically where that line is, they're just gonna cut right along there and remove this part. Um, I need that done. My arms have to get done because there's a lot of excess skin there. Um, up here, you know, I've got a lot of extra here. I've got and my back, like there's back fat that I got to get removed. My boobs, I need to get done a um, breast lift as well as probably breast implants. Now I know you're looking like, Melissa, you've got big boobs. I do. I do have big boobs. Problem is, I'm well over 30. <laughs> I've had a child. My boobs are not as perky as they should be anymore. And because they're so big, they're very heavy, which also makes them less perky. So um, by getting a breast implants and a breast lift, that will help them be where they should be, right? They should be here. They're not. They're, they're here. They should be here. So um, I'm going to need to get that done. Now, I believe that they do the arms and the boobs in one surgery. So that would be one surgery. Uh, I want to get a tummy tuck done, uh, as well as, like I said, around the back, all that extra back fat and stuff. So that's probably a second surgery. 
would be my guess. Uh, my thighs, I have a lot of excess skin on my inner thighs. And my butt, right? Uh, I need like a butt lift and all that kind of stuff. So I assume that's the third surgery, the thighs and the butt, I'm assuming. I'm not sure. Um, I mean, it really depends because they don't want you on the table for a long period of time. It also depends on blood loss, that kind of thing, on how many surgeries this is going to be. But I'm guessing three, maybe four, three or four surgeries is probably in my future. Um, again, is this necessary? Some people will look at it and say, that's not necessary. Why put your th yourself through surgery? That's not necessary. As I stated, for my mental health, it's necessary. Um, I want to stop feeling self-conscious. I want to be able to fit in clothes better. I want to be able to feel better, look better. Um, yeah, it's a lot of mental health. It really is. But like I said, some of this excess skin is also interfering with my exercise. You know, depending on the exercise, sometimes I'll do, I can feel the way my stomach is moving on the excess skin. And it, it sounds funny to say, but it throws off my momentum. Like it just, it's getting in the way. <laughs> so um, I will be seeing the plastic surgeon, hopefully, as long as it's a free consultation. Um, just because I don't want to pay now and have to wait another five years, right? Because then, you know, so we'll see. Um, so he's going to send me to plastic surgeon for a consultation. Um, another health concern that I have is, and this has been happening for a while now. Uh, this has been happening for probably a good 10 years. Um, but it's getting worse. Now I have episodes. I'll call them episodes. I don't know what to call them really. I always thought it, I called them a Graves disease attack. I have a thyroid condition. I was diagnosed with Graves disease. Um, and I always thought it had to do with that. Just out of the blue, there doesn't seem to be any red flags to, to tell me something's coming, but I will just get really shaky and hot and sweaty and I'll feel faintish and my heart starts beating really fast and it just hits me. And it can last anywhere from a few minutes to 30 minutes. Um, it's been happening for a while. And like I said, it's very, it's not consistent on when it happens. I started writing down when it happens and the duration and the symptoms. And I've kind of been trying to keep a log. Um, and I don't know, I always thought it was just like a Graves disease thing. But then I was like, maybe this isn't Graves disease. Um, and I had talked to my doctor about it before and he was like, it sounds like anxiety, you have anxiety. And I'm like, I don't think I do because there's nothing I really worry about. Um, I, I'm not prone to like panic attacks or anything. And literally, literally it can happen anytime. Like I was sitting watching TV. I had my feet up. I was relaxed. I was watching TV and boom, it hit me. And I'm like, I wasn't even thinking about anything. I was watching a movie. So it's like, I, how can that be anxiety? So I'm like, I don't know. Um, and I also feel the urge to eat when it happens. I'm like, oh, I got to eat something. I got to eat something. I don't need to eat something, but I feel like I need to eat something. So I've been kind of thinking about it. And I talked to my doctor about it. I'm like, look, these are, they're starting to happen more. And he was like, is it your blood sugar? Like, you're not diabetic. And I'm like, no. Now, here's the thing. Diabetes runs in my family. My dad had it. My mom has it. I was getting tested when I was younger because both parents had it. And my blood sugar was always great, always good, always great. And I'm like, I don't think it's blood sugar. I don't, I don't think it is. But now I'm like, oh crap, maybe it's my blood sugar. Because now on top of those little attacks that I get, 
every time I eat now, I get extremely tired after, like to the point where I need to have a nap. I don't nap. I'm not a napper. I don't like taking naps because I usually wake up feeling worse than before I went for the nap. But I just have no energy. Like I'll eat and I just, like I crash. I crash. And the other day, this happened. And I'm like, you know what? I'm going to, there were some jelly, I'm, I'm going to have jelly beans. I'm going to eat some sugar and see what happens. You guys, I had about six jelly beans and I started to feel better. And I'm like, oh crap, <sighs> maybe it is my blood sugar. So I'm like, am I diabetic now? Like, I hope I'm not. I don't want to have to take pills or God forbid insulin. I can't do needles. I can't do it. Oh, I can't do it. So I'm like, I don't know. So we'll have to see. Now he did also, my doctor did also say there's something called, oh, I'm going to get it wrong. It's like a PVC or a PRV or a, let me see if I can look it up. It was some kind of, what is it? Uh, is this it? Yes, a PVC. Okay, uh, PVC stands for premature ventricular contractions. Okay, has to do with your heart. So symptoms is a fluttering or flip-flop feeling in the chest, pounding or jumping heart rate, skipped beats and palpitations, uh, or an increased awareness of your heartbeat. Now, my doctor says it could be PVC. And I'm like, I don't think so. Like, I'm my heart's fine. He did do an ECG in the office, uh, and it looked fine. Um, or e ECG, EKG, I think they're the same thing. Um, and then when I had my COVID vaccines, I had heart attack symptoms. So I had plenty of ECGs. And they all came back normal. I had a stress test. It all came back normal. So I don't think it's my heart. However, my doctor would like me to do a holder test just to determine it's not my heart. Now, I also told him that these attacks I get are so sporadic. They're not consistent. I could have one and then not have one for a year. Like, or I could have one and have one two weeks later or a month later. Like they're so sporadic. But basically what a holder test is, is the hospital is going to call me. I'm going to have to go in for an appointment. They're going to hook me up to a, basically an ECG machine. So they're going to put the little tabby things on me. I'm going to have to wear the monitor like uh, on a belt. I'm going to wear it. I have to wear it somewhere between 24 and 48 hours straight. I'm not allowed to take it off. I have to sleep in it. I can't shower or bathe for those 24 to 48 hours because it can't get wet. I literally have to keep it on my body the whole time. Sucks. And it's basically just going to capture the rhythms of my heart for that time period to see if there's any variation or anything that shouldn't be there. I'm fully expecting the results to be 100% negative of any issue. They're going to be fine. There's going to be nothing wrong. But he wants me to do this test just to rule it out. So I'm like, fine. Um, so in the meantime, yeah, it could be... Could be, you know, hypoglycemia. Definitely could be. Um, I did do a little research on hypoglycemia, and they did say, interestingly enough, uh, bariatric patients, like me, apparently it can happen. Because uh, there's, I guess, this phenomenon called hypoglycemia without actually having diabetes. Apparently, bariatric patients, it can happen to. Um, so I might be one of those lucky people. <laughs> we'll have to wait and see, I guess. So I do have a few, you know, referrals out there that I have to follow up on just to kind of get everything in line. Nothing crazy, nothing serious, but you know, it's really important to stay on top of your health, physical, mental, emotional, the whole thing, right? Um, so I guess this is just kind of a little, hey guys, just a reminder Make sure you get your physicals because they are important. This is a time where you can talk to your doctor about any issues that have been bothering you, whether they're 
physical, medical, mental, whatever it is, there's lots of resources out there to help with any of those aspects. Um, so make sure that you are talking to someone and you are looking for those answers. And like I have been saying, you have to be your own advocate, you guys. Your voice is the only one that matters here. And if you have an issue and you feel like someone's not taking you seriously, do not give up. Whether that means you find someone else, whether that means you do your own research, whatever that looks like to you, just don't give up because the only person out there who is going to do what you need for your health is you. So make sure you are speaking up and if someone's not listening, you find someone that will. It's really important. So that's it for your Wellness Wednesday. Thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, I probably will do some update videos on this once I get that holder test done and a few other things and hopefully the plastic surgery consultation. So make sure you've subscribed so you don't miss out on those updates and we'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.